Welcome to another wondrous episode of Beer and Politics. We are your complicit host. He's Ryan. I'm Ryan. Today we're discussing the NRA, we're talking about the Las Vegas shooting, and we're talking about gun control. But of course, before we do, Madam Brewmaster, what do we have on tap today? Today we have Redanculus from Founders Brewing. Redanculus. Red. Redanculus. This here is an Imperial Red India Pale Ale. What that means is it's going to be Imperial. It's going to have a lot more booze in it. It's going to be a red IPA, so kind of a tweak on a style, really more than a style itself. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be brewed with caramel malt and a lot of booze. Yeah. What do you think? <sighs> well, if we could shut that dog up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is interesting. I think uh, you taste a lot of the caramel, mm -hmm. or caramel, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, it's sweet. Uh, you can still taste the hops. It is walking a very interesting line. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to like everything Founders. I tend to like dark things. I like multi things. I like sweet things. I don't know how many of these I could drink. I'm thinking only one at the end of the day because mm -hmm. I think it is exceptionally sweet. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact there's a lot of hops in there that I can absolutely taste. It really does a good job of walking the line. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give my rating after you kind of describe what you're thinking. So I... I, I think I'm about on the same page with you. I think I could probably drink one. This clock's in at 9.5% alcohol, so like you, that. You, you probably don't want to drink too much more than one mm -hmm. of them. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of... You taste a lot of that sweetness, a lot of the maltiness. Um, it's really hot forward, mm -hmm. especially for a beer that's as sweet as this is. Sure. And the thing is, is it's only 90 IBUs, which is relatively low for something that I would consider an imperial IPA. Right. But it's still... A lot of those flavors are forward. Yeah. So I think it's a... Pretty decent beer. Pretty good stuff. All right. Well, my rating is three and a half Nugents. Those are Ted Nugents. That's, that's good. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's, it's good. It's better than average. It's not my favorite beer because it is, I think, just a little too sweet for me, but it's good. All right. And uh, I, you know, I, I'm actually going to give this three and a half washed up guitars. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> so thanks to Founders. Yep. Red Danculus. Mm -hmm. Red Danculus, whatever. Yep. Uh, it is red, though, and we like that. Um, <laughs> they don't sponsor us. We're still waiting for that, however, if you're listening, Founders. But thank you. We're going to keep drinking your beer. Yep. So we're going to talk about the NRA mm -hmm. and the response. At least that's what I'm going to talk about. Yep. The response they had to the Las Vegas shooting, because something was different about this. Yep. And we can tell something was different because the NRA's response was different. Normally after a mass shooting, they'll they'll be quiet for you know a day or two or something, but then they'll come back and say they want to continue supporting guns, supporting the Second Amendment, whatever you want to call it, saying that no, we should not have additional regulations. But something was different this time around. And they said afterwards that we should consider, at the very least, consider regulations on a bump stock. Wow. Okay. So, so that's a very different response, and um, and I'm just for I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of sum up basically what a bump stock is. So Good. you know we have a we have a semi-automatic rifle and we have a fully automatic rifle. The difference between the two is the action. So pulling the trigger as fast as you can pull it is a semi-automatic. Pulling a holding to allow it to keep firing that is fully automatic. So sure. for uh, for the intents and purposes of this discussion, we're gonna say fully automatic weapons are illegal. It's not technically true, yeah. but for the purpose of the discussion, it's true enough, okay? So what a bump stock does is actually harnesses the power of the recoil and essentially pull the trigger for you. Mm. So it makes it so you can pull the trigger much, much faster, mm -hmm. and it actually basically emulates a fully automatic rifle. Now, it's not fully automatic right. because, again, the action hasn't changed, right. but it allows it to perform like one. And so the NRA said, we will consider, you know, we think we should consider banning these, mm -hmm. or at least additional regulations for these. And I think there's... I think there's a few reasons why. Okay. Um, number one, we're going to look at who and who on the shooter side of it. This isn't the kind of person that is easily, we can't easily put him into a pocket. We can't easily say, oh, he was a disturbed kid. Oh, this was a kid that was bullied. Sure. Oh, yeah. he's got a history of mental illness. Oh, he's a Muslim. Right. Oh, he's part of a gang. We can't do this. This was an older white guy with 40 some guns and he had a decent amount of money. Right. He actually sounds like an NRA member. <laughs> so, oh. like, if you think about this, think about who he was. Uh -huh. He fits the bill with who the NRA is. That's Next, interesting. we're going to go to where it happened. And I don't mean Las Vegas. I mean a country music concert, okay? Yep. So when you think about country music, mm. stereotypically, who are we talking about? Probably conservatives. We're on the conservative th side of things. Sure. Now, this is important here because this isn't like a liberal safe zone. 
This is not a school where teachers should have had guns. Right. And, and maybe it was gun free, but that's not really the point. The point here is that this is a this is a conservative area. This is a conservative group. Yeah. And that is something that's very different than what we've seen in the past. Next, what we're going to go to is huh. the uh, we're going to go back to the who. And we're going to go, except this time, to the victims. Okay. The victims. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about a country music concert, yeah. so it's largely conservatives. Yeah. And what do you hear from the NRA? A good guy with a gun is who we need to stop a bad guy with a gun. Yeah. We know that couldn't have happened. It couldn't have helped. It would have meant nothing in this situation. And then when you look at the victims at this country music concert, we see off-duty police officers and military. Mm -hmm. We see people... Who are the people that the NRA would say we need them to have the guns so that they can protect us? And we know that in this case, not a, not sure. a, none of it would have meant a damn thing. Almost nothing you could have done. Nothing that you could have done. So what we yeah. see is a man who could be a member of the NRA. We see a venue that is a conservative venue. And we see the victims mm. who are the heroes that the conservatives put up on the pedestal that would stop this from happening. On no level. Is this like any other mass shooting that's happened before? And I don't mean it's inherently worse or inherently better. Sure. It is inherently it's unique, different. Yeah. And so, what do we see? We go back to the what. What was the one thing that was different this time? And it's the bump stock. It's not. It's not high capacity magazines. It's not a ton of rifles. It's not the type of ammunition. There's the one thing that's different. It is this legal device that allows you to take your legal firearm and perform like an illegal weapon. Right. It's the low hanging fruit. And so the NRA says, let's talk about banning it. So is this, is this progress? And I would say largely probably, yeah, because we as a society have decided fully automatic weapons shouldn't just be out there. Okay. And so, yeah, this probably is progress. But I don't think it's progress we should really be excited about. It's like when you're third and 25 and Carson Palmer throws a one-yard screen pass. Hey. <laughs> hashtag Palmer progress. Hashtag face Palmer. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Madam Brewmaster. Madam Brewmaster loves the cards. She's just a Cardinals okay. fan. Uh, Still love the Cardinals. It's and it, was, it can be heartbreaking to watch. Mm. But Carson Palmer can. <laughs> yes. Mm. So, yes, it is progress, and that is a good thing. But don't take this to mean anything different from the NRA. So what's your... What's your comment? What's NRA's commentary here? Are you saying like they're trying to protect conservatives or are they just using this as a way to say we helped? But why do they take interest in this? I guess is my question. I think they take more interest because it hits their core there and it go. hits their core values. More. Okay. And it, it really, it really upends a lot of these, a lot of the conservative or second amendment supporter values that we're talking about. It's something that's so blatantly, obviously clear to, Literally almost everyone that this right. is something that should be done, and it's something that's been actually done at a level of the action. It's not like the NRA supports the fully automatic weapons on every street corner. Right. Right? But we have this device that can essentially make that happen, and it's perfectly fine. Mm. So back to my question, though. What would happen, in your opinion, if they didn't? If they decide to do nothing? Uh, I think, I think, it would, I think they would, it would hurt them politically, even from their own supporters. Okay. So that makes sense. Then. Yep. So uh, we didn't actually talk about what either of us was going to talk about. I knew he wanted to talk about the NRA. Um, I actually want to talk about uh, gun control uh, because what we find is, especially with these mass shootings, that's not the only time we bring up gun control <laughs> in America. And so this gets this has provided me an opportunity to really talk about what I think about gun control in America and what I think Americans really think about gun control. So my biggest issue with the gu gun control discussion is that we're generally not thoughtful <laughs> about it. That's very true. Right. So uh, we get a mass shooting and we start talking about it, but we're not really being thoughtful in what we're talking about. And we see this on both sides, both the right and the left. So from the right's perspective, their only thoughts on gun control seems to largely be it's our rights. To, it's our right to bear arms. That's it. <laughs> and, and not acknowledging that gun control in, exists in its current form. Correct. But they don't even talk about whether or not they like it. It's just our right to bear arms. So right. you, you bring up anything. It's like, well, I have a right to bear arms. And the reason it's really not thoughtful is because you do know that there's probably a large majority of them that would say something like, we probably shouldn't have nuclear weapons in our arsenal. Right. Right. We maybe shouldn't have tanks. We maybe shouldn't have missiles and things like that. So they largely agree, I think, on that. But the thing that's thoughtless about it is they don't know why. It's pretty arbitrary. So if I walked up to you and said, do you think you know, we should have nuclear weapons, you would, no. you would say no. And then if I say why, it, it's some kind of thoughtless response like, well, I think it's obvious. 
<laughs> right. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, thanks for not thinking about why you believe the things you believe. You know, why do you support the Second Amendment is not something we talk about. We don't talk about the criteria that we define for saying a weapon shouldn't be used. Because if we did, if we talked about the why, we'd be able to remove, I think, a large chunk of weapons from the discussion, which actually helps us in defining what it is we think the Second Amendment is there to protect. Mm -hmm. And it helps facilitate the discussion. But if we don't do it, we just say, Second Amendment, and we walk away. <laughs> And we leave it on the left side to say something to us that's compelling. <laughs> and largely, they don't know anything about guns. Yes, and they're <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. So, uh, so now we go to the left, and the issue with them is largely the same. They're also not thoughtful in their discussion um, because they say stuff like, "Well, we need common sense legislation." <laughs> I hate that. All right, common sense legislation is actually not what we need. The thing about legislation is. <laughs> is that it should be very specific to a very specific need, a very specific issue. We're asking the government to step in. That's what legislation is. Mm -hmm. We're saying, government, we can't handle this. We need you to step in on our behalf. Because here's the deal. If it's common sense, we would think the government doesn't need to step in. <laughs> we would have handled it. We would have handled it. Well, you know, like burglary is is has been legislated against, right? Well, sure. you would say you probably shouldn't take things that aren't yours. That's common sense. Right. Clearly not, because <laughs> people were doing it, right? So we needed the government to step in. So I hate uh, the common sense argument, because really it's a deflection from saying, I've thought about why we should do something. Because you have it. You're like, oh, it's common sense. I don't have to explain myself. Yes, you do. Especially if you want something to be legislated. Especially if you're talking about limiting something that's a constitutional right. Ooh, a constitutional right. That's a great point. Nice. I'm actually going to talk about that uh -oh. in a little bit. But that's, right. that's absolutely correct. And so, you know, when, when we talk about legislating things for very specific purposes, we need to lay out those specific purposes. So uh, I was talking to someone on social media this week, and they were saying, well, common sense legislation. If you're purchasing a privately owned weapon, mm -hmm. we should have background checks for the person purchasing the weapon, like we do for other weapons. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. He says, common sense legislation. Well, my question would be, what is that legislation supposed to be addressing? Mm in your mind, specifically? And I think largely the answer is, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, the, the relevant answer would be, well, it would protect us from people who shouldn't be able to, pro uh, to procure weapons mm -hmm. from procuring the weapon, but more specifically, and then using it in a crime. <laughs> right, because if they're not using it in a crime, we probably don't really care. And when we think about we think about, you know, when we talk about gun control, this goes back to these mass shootings, as we only talk about mass shootings. My question would be, are you bringing this up to address the mass shooting? Because if you are, my question for you is going to be how many people have committed a mass shooting with guns that they didn't have the right to purchase, that they right. would have not been able to purchase had they had a background check. Right. And I think largely the answer is zero, if not very small amounts. And I'm talking about uh, Vegas style mass shootings. Sure. We've also gotten into this, this stupid idea that a guy who targets his estranged wife and three of her family members is the same as what happened in Vegas. Right. And that we equally care about that. <laughs> they're, whether or not we care or we should, they're clearly not the same thing. They're not the same thing. And actually, I'm going to argue we don't care about that. All right. So if that isn't to address the Vegas shooting, and you're not sure what the quantity of things that it is addressing is, I don't know why we're passing the legislation. I think that's something that's thoughtful that needs to, to be discussed. Mm -hmm. um, now, let's talk about automatic weapons. Let's. Okay, so they're largely, we'll say, illegal. Sure. Okay, yes. and then you just talked about the bump stock, and people are saying that should be illegal too because it takes a semi-automatic weapon and practically mm -hmm. turns it into an automatic weapon. Well, my question, and I actually asked Madam Brewmaster this, throwing her under the bus a little bit, <laughs> but let's say in the Vegas shooting, he only had semi-automatic weapons, and he had more than a dozen, and he still had all that ammunition. How many people do you think would have died in that scenario? <clears throat> still a lot. Give me a number. Just pick, pick a threshold. Uh, let's say 30. 30. How many people would have been injured? I'd say 250. 250. Is that acceptable to you? <laughs> So this is great. Uh, it, so it, no, it's not. It's not acceptable. It's not. Ex it's better. It's better, but it's not but it's acceptable. acceptable because that's kind of my point. We're trying to have the discussion so that we can stop having the discussion, <laughs> right. right? So you're talking about well, let's make this illegal. Let's make that illegal. If it's not, if you haven't identified your need and what you're trying to address, 
and specifically that threshold, mm -hmm. you're not doing a thoughtful job here. You're not, you're not doing a helpful conversation because, you know, we make the bump stock illegal, we make automatic weapons illegal, and then 25 people die and 250 injured, and we have the same conversation. Right. Why don't we just have one conversation where we figure out what it is we're trying to do in America with regards to guns? Second Amendment, Ryan. Second Amendment. That is going to be the argument. But, again, if you figure out what your criteria is, we can see where the middle is, we can see what we're trying to do. And that's and that's my other point, right? So I'm glad you brought that up again. We're talking about constitutional rights. This is something that requires thoughtfulness. It's yeah. our right. There, it's there in the Constitution for a reason. Now, you might not agree with that reason anymore, but I think it's worth being thoughtful when we talk about limiting rights uh, in any way, especially constitutional rights. Yes, right? Uh, and that brings me to my last point, which is some people say, well, this is a mental illness issue. Okay, we do have laws regarding mental illness and whether or not you can purchase a weapon. They exist. We have legislated to some extent mental illness and your ability to procure a weapon. All right. To legislate mental illness more is precarious. I don't think people understand that because what you get close to doing oftentimes is violating your right to due process. Yes, another constitutional right. So when you talk about mental illness, you start to bring in another constitutional right and limiting it. And I think it's important that you understand that. Now, and, and it's entirely based on someone's say so. It's entirely based on yeah. someone's opinion. Exactly. And, and that's really important because some people would say, well, I don't really need a gun. If someone said I was mentally ill and couldn't have a gun, I don't care. I don't even really like the Second Amendment. Sure. Okay. Well, let's pretend it's the First Amendment. <laughs> right. Let's pretend it's your right to vote. Okay, so your right to vote, someone says, you're too crazy. I mean, why should crazy people vote? Right, that would be a horrible idea. <laughs> I mean, Look what happens. Yeah, you might end up with someone, I don't know, like a reality TV show host as president. Mm. God, I'm glad that will never happen. <laughs> so, so mentally ill people probably shouldn't vote. I mean, if we're using common sense, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So, so imagine you were the person that, as you said, somebody who we placed in author an authoritative position, who you question says you're mentally ill, you can't vote. I mean, wouldn't you ask, you, wouldn't you ask them, what are your credentials? Mm -hmm. Who gave you authority to make that decision? Wouldn't you argue that they're wrong? Yeah, it's important. Constitutional rights are important when we're talking about limiting them. It's important to understand your needs, your issues, how you want to address them, and then specifically how they're going to impact everyone's rights. And we largely don't do that in America today. We say it's common sense, or we say Second Amendment. And that is our whole discussion. And by the way, Americans only care about mass shootings. I'm going to say that in general, they only care about mass shootings. That's why it only comes up um, gun control during a mass shooting. We don't care about gang violence. We don't care about suicides. And I bring those two things up because if you get rid of those, our... Uh, death rate at the hands of guns is very similar to all of those super safe countries you think uh, we should be more like. We have a gang problem in the U.S. and we have a suicide problem in the U.S. with regards to guns. But largely, most people don't care about it because we only care about stuff that affects us or could affect us. That's the key right there. Yeah, because like, oh, well, I'm not going to be in a gang. I don't care about right. that. I don't it's worry about else. it. someone else. It's someone over there. Yep. I don't worry about it. I don't live anywhere near a gang. I don't think gangs will ever affect me. I don't worry about that guy who kills his strange wife and her three family members because I don't hang out with psychopaths. Right. Uh, I don't worry about being mugged because I live in a safe neighborhood. I don't worry about it. We see this with terrorists, uh, terrorism as well. Yeah. We saw that Muslim ban where, where it was like seven countries or whatever, and none of those countries, nobody from any one of those countries has ever performed a terrorist attack on American soil, and we banned them. Because it makes us feel safer. Yeah, the feeling is... Yeah. We want to feel safe. Yes. We don't care if we are safe. We want to feel safe. When we see these mass shootings, we say, whoa, that could affect me. Gangs won't affect me. Muggings won't affect me. Uh, that estranged, like, homicide guy won't affect me. But this random mm -hmm. shooting... I stand might. in crowds a lot. Yeah. That's really scary. So we would rather feel safe. That's why we say common sense legislation. Then we would rather be safe which is what, we're what would be really important and thoughtful in this discussion. Last call. Cheers. Cheers. I want to thank you all for watching. It's been a great episode Absolutely. of Beer and Politics. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Madam Brewmaster. Thanks to Eastman, D.C. Remember, it's just beer and politics. Cheers.
Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on social media. Links can be found below. You can get all our episodes as a podcast on your favorite platform. Here are a couple videos we think you might enjoy. Until next time, remember, it's just beer and politics.